awesome. Hello friends, it's Central. Just a pleasure to take a few minutes to share with you some information about a potential our leadership structure. I want to say first of all, I've totally enjoyed meeting with your core committee, with meeting with some of the governance people and with some of your elders. I spoke to Murray Cottle about you guys several months ago and we began to think about going to Whangarei and he said that it's a big hearted, genuinely Christian church and I think that describes you very, very well. He also said that as, as a church, probably one of the biggest blocks they've got is the leadership structure and I have to say, as I've read through the materials, I've looked at your constitution and various things, I think that's true. I think your structure, you've got wonderful people on every level in your church, but your structure is quite confusing. And for somebody like me who just loves to seek God for a vision with an eldership team, with a clear leadership team, and to be in submission to that team, it would really help for us to make some changes. I spoke to Murray Cottle and some of the union regarding what models are out there within the Baptist Church right now. And basically the answer that came back was the only model they're advocating is a ministry team that model. And every church has little variations of that, but that's the only model. And if you look in your, your Baptist handbook that Hillary's got in the office here, that's the only model that's there as well. So what I thought I'd do is talk about how the ministry team the model has been working for me for, gosh, about 16 years now, and working very, very well. And just give you some idea as to what's working in this context, so you can talk about what might work in the Whangarei context. A couple of things, though. Vision's incredibly important. And when I looked at the purpose statement at Whangarei and it said make disciples for Jesus, I thought you cannot get a better purpose statement than that. But your vision statement is really fuzzy. It's essentially a, re a reiteration of the Purpose Driven Life book, the five purposes from Rick Warren's book. And it's a vision that uh, Rick Warren had for his church, but I really, it's not clear. And it's certainly not something I think God's inspired for the church there at Whangarei. A vision should say certain things. A vision should say who it is you're trying to reach. Look, look, learning about some churches in Auckland recently, there's a church that's particularly evangelising new immigrants. There's another church that's doing community work as a church in large groups to reach the lost. So it should say who you're trying to reach. And even though that people group might seem exclusive, the church is open to everybody. The vision certainly just, char just gives character and sharpness to the mission of the church. Who are you going to reach? How are you going to reach them? And what will the church look like when you get there? So when you look at the um, vision statement that you've currently got, it doesn't do those things. It kind of just covers all that Christianity is. And there's no clarity or focus. I've been in churches where they've tried to, as a church, seek a vision. So everyone's having their input. And what tends to happen with that is we all want what's our passion. I, for instance, love children's ministry and I've seen kids come to Christ. And so if I was not the pastor of a church, but I was a member in the church, I might particularly push that ministry when the church is asking about what is a vision for the future. So vision, biblically, starts under leadership. If you look at the book of Acts, the apostles would meet together, they would pray, and they would seek God for what to do. And God would say to the apostles, hey, look, set apart Paul and Barnabas for mission, missionary work, or set apart seven uh, deacons so that the, the overseers of the church are involved in the pastoral care and the day-to-day -day mechanics of the church, so they're free for preaching and for hearing the word of God, listening to the voice of God. Vision is like that. It starts, I believe, in the leadership level of the church. And the leaders are responsible for vision and keeping a clear vision before the church. It's then, as it was in the book of Acts, submitted to the church. And when it's right, the congregation will say, look, this seems good to us and the Holy Spirit. We agree. Set apart those guys for mission. Set apart these people to be ministry leaders in the church and to look after the widows or look after the orphans. So vision is really important. And to have the right structure in place to seek vision is really important too. If we have a look just to my side here, for me I've relied heavily on the elders over the years. Uh, I've not gone to a church and said I believe this is the way forward or given um, specific direction for the church unless I've first submitted that to the eldership of the church. I guess if you were to say what are elders biblically, um, if you look at the role of the apostles in the early church, as churches were planted there were still apostles, those apostles still existed and your apostles were, were birthed through the Holy Spirit. But essentially what the apostles did became the role of the senior pastor and the elders. And so for me, uh, I want to use the eldership to clarify the vision of the church. And so I might get 60% of the vision or 65% of the vision. I won't share that with the church and I'll submit it to the eldership. The eldership will test that in their prayer life and with scripture. They'll add to it, they'll clarify it before it comes to the church. I believe elders are responsible for church discipline. When we've had a false prophet in the church, when we've had people 
behaving immorally in the church. We've tried to lovingly restore them, but there's been a very clear process and it's been steered by the eldership. The elders are to pray for the sick. I believe that elders have an authority in God, a biblical elders, that when it comes to the miraculous, when it comes to dealing with the demonic realm, they, they just bring about a significant change, they have significant authority. They test prophecies. Not only do I listen to prophecies in the church and say, is this biblical, is this person right? But the elders do that as well. They identify upcoming leaders in the church. They say, well, who's got anointing? Who's got what ministry is being blessed? What leaders and people need to be mentored for the future? They test all the teaching, including my teaching and preaching, against scripture. And in the Baptist church, anyone can come back to the pastor and say, look, can you, how does that line up with scripture? And that's welcomed. But it's particularly the responsibility of the eldership. They establish church policy and procedures. I'm not talking about uh, health and safety and things like that. I'm talking about what is the church being led to do in terms of a mission approach or a local evangelism approach or um, procedures in the church, steps ahead to grow the church. Also with the senior pastor, they bring about the annual vision of the church. So with an eldership, I seek God for a vision that's unique to that church and I expect what happens up at Whangarei is different to what happened at Ranui. It'll be very different to what happened in Tokara, very different to what happened in Radahi and Tiaho where I've passed it as well. Each of those churches had different visions and I expect a new vision when I get to Whangarei. But uh, I expect that vision that will last for years, but also for the elders and I every year, maybe four months before the next AGM, to get together and really clarify what do we believe God's saying will happen in the next 12 months. And that clear vision, that, that progressive vision, becomes the, the uh, information that the ministry team leaders need to really shape their ministries for the next 12 months and set their goals accordingly to. Two key characteristics of an elder. I believe elders must be people of prayer, people who can hear the voice of God, and people who can teach the word of God. If they're not prayers, people can listen to God, if they're not people who know the word of God well and can explain the word of God, then they don't fit uh, with the right characteristics to be an elder. That's our highest authority. We're autonomous from the Baptist Union, although they are incredibly skilled and will come and help us and support us as we request them. The next highest authority in the Baptist Church are the elders, and the most churches elected for two years. So the elders are given oversight of the church. They're not the, per the focal point. The par senior pastors are one people see when they come in the church during the week. He's the easiest person to get to, or she. But the elders have the oversight of the church. And the senior pastor comes under the eldership. Now most Baptist churches, the senior pastor functions as an elder. But he's really the voice piece of the eldership. A senior pastor should not be a teaching things or, or speaking about vision or things of the future that's not in total harmony with what the elders have agreed to. Under the senior pastor can be associate pastors and their ministry teams, and typically in a middle-sized Baptist church like yours, youth, part-time children, part-time pastoral care, and typically someone doing admin, as Terry Butcher has so efficiently done over the years as well. Um, instead of calling people deacons, because under the old model, there was such a lot of baggage with deacons, so many Baptist churches infighting and arguing, and Southern Baptists still do this, about the year 2000, the Baptist movement suggested we drop the word deacons, which is a biblical word for ministry team leaders, and put the word on ministry team leaders. Now these people um, have a budget, they have a ministry team, they have the authority, and they've got the power to make decisions as, according to their ministries, as long as it fits within the core beliefs and values of the church. Now if they spend money over budget, if they do things that don't fit within these core beliefs, they're accountable back to myself and they're accountable back to the members at the AGM. Typically in a Baptist church of your size, there is a, a youth, children, pastoral care, admin, prayer, property, missions, local evangelism, worship and inclusion, and small groups. Some churches will have a young adults ministry team leader as well, and at um, Whangarei maybe it's wise to have a seniors ministry team leader as well. I love this situation because if anyone struggles within the team, they're all accountable back to the team leaders and associate pastors, they're all accountable back to me, they're accountable back to the elders, and then we're all accountable back to the members at the church family meeting.